presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport, Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. Nice I appreciate it, George. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate you calling uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. Listen to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one and a safe one. Day. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Let's see what we have going on today. We have the ES Mini trading about sideways, about 4908 uh, 50 cents right there. We have the Russell futures trading at 1982, up about 0.5%. Uh, the NQ slightly down off about 0.08%, trading about $17,606 there. Dow futures sideways again at 38,071. Gold contract, some interesting movements in it going forward, okay? So we're about sideways right now. Trading at 2017, of course, we've been having uh, not a lot of action in it, but just kind of a slow burn down, uh, just a tad. Still above that level of 2000, which is good for the psyche on a lot of things here. We're looking at silver trading at $23 on the futures contract. Copper finally back up 386. Now we're down slightly today. But we had about yesterday a massive tick up in it uh, on some pretty significant volume. So that's good for all the copper holders out there. <clears throat> we take a look at, you know, let's really say some commodities that are, are getting pretty strong right now. And we're looking at light sweet crude futures trading up about $2.32, up about 3.09%. That is about $77.41. Of course, a lot is going on. We had some issues in production uh, in the Northwest uh, last week. Uh, you had some issues with freezing of the pipes. Of course, some things still persist complication-wise um, around the Red Sea area. I believe Libya is back and producing. Um, but as it is, I mean, this, you know, we were kind of anticipating a, a, a tick up in, in crude oil futures. I mean, energy is just a little bit more expensive right now. Of course, it's been a very cold winter in the U.S. too. Tesla, some pretty, you know, this is pretty substantial for this stock. Um, a lot of the times... You know, you have this conversation. Tesla gets sold off every now and then. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gets sold off every now and then. And, you know, really rebounds uh, quite well. Uh, you know, this has been a decline in this stock since about December 28th. Uh, it has been a healthy decline with a lot of volume. Or not a lot of volume, but, you know, a substantial amount of volume. Uh, and then today, with some reports released uh, and then some comments from Elon Musk, uh, quite a gap down. Trading at 182.58, down about 12.16%. We'll talk a little bit about them uh, later in the program. Still Dynamics trading at just under 116. Uh, crazy the stock moves. The DXY, okay, so let's take a look, right? DXY still trading at 103.58. It was off about 800 ticks yesterday morning. A lot of people were, I mean, we were trading, what, 102.74? And then it really, it, it made a recovery throughout the day. It, this is the hard thing with an, anticipating this market, okay? Obviously, with the lower dollar, uh, there's kind of a, you know, typically an inverse relationship with the uh, rest of the market. Uh, and then, of course, with metals as well. We've been having a lot of trouble with gold, getting gold moving and, and just kind of getting any kind of action in it. That's not just a very, you know, kind of slow rundown in, in that kind of industry. Uh, I think that fake out had a lot of people see um, some action potentially forming. Well, we're right back here at that 103.57 level. It has been pretty sticky um, around that, at least for this month. And we'll have to wait and see what kind of goes on. I, I do think, obviously, the market's been making all-time highs. Um, it's been doing, you know, all right. We're going to wait for the Fed on January 30th to see um, if we get any really big conviction either way. 
I think people really want to see these rates come down from the Fed, and I don't know if it'll be as soon as they're expecting. If that's the case, and it's not a very you know flowery kind of meeting this month from the Fed, you know, I, I, I could potentially see some kind of minor pullback in it. Obviously, it's inarguable that the market wants higher price. If the market wants higher price, the market gets higher price. But, you know, I wonder if there's going to be some kind of step back into kind of more conservative outlook for the next few months, depending on what the Fed says. The Q here trading at 425.68, Google at 153.29, up about 2% today. Meta trading 392.71, Disney making a little bit of progress with it, trading uh, just under $95, $95.49. Of course, some great kind of pump up here uh, around November 9th, November 10th has been able to trade within this balance of 90 to 95. You know, if you can get back above this 95 level for a few days with some decent volume, yeah, stock looks okay. Apple, 194, we can talk a little bit about them as well. And then, of course, some of the companies we're looking at last week. Um, what I want to look at is, is Humira. Uh, you know, they're down 11.33% today. Uh, again, some pretty uh, significant earnings. Uh, to the downside, Fisker, you know, they had some great news. But again, as I was saying, I, I don't think Fisker's really shelled out fully yet. And, of course, they got of sold off today. Uh, Nokia is super interesting. We'll talk about them in a little bit. Of course, Comcast as well. Let's talk about Comcast quickly. They are the parent company of a streaming program called, uh, excuse me, excuse me, a uh, streaming platform called Peacock. I don't know much about Peacock. Nobody really uses Peacock. You keep getting these email blasts from them constantly on every email I have. They've somehow uh, have, have gotten that address and then they keep sending it to us, nobody, nobody uses it. However, um, it, it looks that NFL is gonna be streaming on Peacock, and this was uh, pretty good for Comcast. Let's take a look a little bit about them. Okay, so they had three million new Peacock subscribers during the latest financial quarter, came in part from viewers drawn to the NFL and the Big Ten football games without specifying actual numbers. Uh, NBCU's loss related to Peacock amounted to 825 million in the fourth quarter compared with a year ago loss of 978 million um, on revenue of 660 million. They're saying that Peacock is now gonna be the fastest growing streaming platform, okay? I don't know if that means anything when the platform's already significantly smaller user base wise than every other platform they're having to compete with. You know, obviously, you know, you can have high percent growth and it's a lot easier to achieve that when you already don't have a very high base to begin with, right? You know, I, I don't know what staying power really Peacock has in this world. You're already seeing way higher costs of operation and things like Netflix are going to be increasing the price. They're getting rid of some of their ad-free subscription uh, in other parts of the world. So you'll still pay the same amount for subscription. Uh, and, and now you're going to get ads. And that's kind of giving you insight into what other streamers are dealing with. It's something like Peacock that already doesn't really have a huge base. Um, I, you know, I don't know what the future is for them. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Com. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. And uh, we currently have Tim Ord. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tom has Tim Ord on the show. And uh, this Thursday is no different. Tim, can you hear me? I sure can. How Hello, are you doing? Uh, Hello? Yep, you doing all right, Tim? How you doing? Uh, yep, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I faded out there for a second, so... But yeah, um, I guess I guess we can start looking at charts if you want. Absolutely, let's take a look. We have uh, chart one up right now. This is the arm seen in, or excuse me, arm SNYA. Right, that's a, actually the trend. That's arms index for Perfect. New York Stock Exchange, and uh, yeah, what's something a little bit unusual going on here? Uh, the middle window <coughs> is the twenty-one day arms, and the top window is the uh, ten-day arms, and in between that's the SP or SPY. And normally, when you get the twenty-one day arms up into bullish territory, uh, last time that happened was in. March of last year, um, actually, we kind of had a, a slew of them there all through that bottom process. But normally, when you, you get the arms on a 21 day above 1.2, uh, we hit, I think, probably 1. Point, or close to 1.3. We're at 1.21 right now. A lot of times, the market goes in a trending mode. So it's not just going to go up for a couple of days. A lot of times it goes up a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. Uh, the shaded pink area on this chart shows the times when the 21-day, which is basically a month of panic, uh, trend reading above 1.2 on a daily basis is carrying kind of a panic day. And you get 21 days of it. That's basically a whole month of trading of panic. So the more days of panic, the more uh, the longer term rally uh, is implied. Uh, so we're thinking, uh, or actually I'm thinking, anyhow, the market is probably starting to trend here. We're not just going to rally a week or two. I think we may rally a month or two or, or, or even okay. longer. And I got some other indicators we're going to look at uh, as we go through uh, uh, the charts. But this is one <laughs> indicator since the 21 day trend is above 1.2. A lot of times that projects uh, multi-week, if not multi-month rallies. Uh, so how high is high, we don't know yet. But uh, you really don't want to short a market 
when the 21 day trends above 1.2 or even a 10 day trend above 1.2 and right now both of them are above there See. not saying we could have some down days in the market you can but ultimately the market uh, will, will trend higher so let's go to chart two yep we have it up and uh, this is kind of a short term view um the re this is a uh, the bottom window is basically just the volume for the SPX, uh, the daily chart. And next window up uh, is the uh, SPX. The next window up is the SPX fix ratio. Top window is the SPY. The first thing I want to talk about is the, is the bottom there. The market, at least yesterday, was up five days in a row. And today's not over yet, but it looks probably going to be up six days in a row. Uh, six, uh, momentum kind of rules the market. Uh, it, it kind of actually, uh, of, of all the uh, of all the stuff I look at, momentum is probably the most important to me to look at. And if you get five days up in a row, there's an 83% chance the market will be higher within five days. So even though you may have a day or two or down or even maybe three down days, ultimately you'll break to new highs. And if we're up again today, uh, six days in a row up, I forgot what that percentage was, but I think it's in the low 90s. If we're up today again, uh, so even though we may see a mild consolidation here, I don't think it's anything to get really bearish about. It may trend down a little bit or sideways here for the next couple of days, uh, especially if you're up that many days in a row. But the the consolidation should be mild, and ultimately we will start to break higher again. So I don't think anything meaningful is developing here. And that blue that shaded area I got there. Uh, right is showing that the SPX VIX ratio made a higher high as the S&P's made a higher high. That's usually a bullish divergence, suggesting at some point the market's going to keep going higher. Right at the end is usually when you get the bearish divergence, and so far we don't have that. Uh, so uh, short term, maybe you might see a, a couple of days of weakness, uh, but in general, the trend is up. Uh, we're still holding long here, so I don't think anything, again, worthwhile uh, top is is not forming here at all. It's just a, right. a mild consolidation, uh, then higher prices. Let's take a look at uh, chart three. Give me one second. Okay, perfect. We have it up. All right. This is a point I, I try to, uh, to make. Uh, the, the bottom window is the VIX. Next window up is the SP, SPX VIX ratio. And above that is the SPX. And I want to point out here, uh, the VIX usually signals the top, near me a term top, start forming. Because when the, the S&Ps will, will keep making higher highs, and that ratio, which is second window up from the bottom, will make lower highs. And I pointed out uh, the last two tops, uh, the 2022 top that peaked out in late 2022 or 2021, early mm -hmm. 2022. And that top we had back in uh, 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 2020, there was a top. And both the, the SPX ratios made higher higher lows or uh, lower highs as the SPs made higher highs. And that was a big warning sign that a, a decline was coming. Well, we don't have that here. Uh, in the uh, areas we have right now circled in blue, we got the SPs making higher highs. And that ratio also making higher highs. There, again, there can be some short-term or short-term pullbacks, but intermediate term wise, uh, the market looks pretty good. This is a weekly chart, so it it looks at the bigger picture. And right now, as it says right now, I, I think that 2024 will be an up year, and um, and we may be actually even starting a, a trending market over the next several weeks. If not, maybe we, we trend all the way into May or June, I think it's starting to look like. So it's, it's really time to kind of be long here. Uh, and and you've, you've had this rally, that. I think, is still in the early stages. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 definitely. My, my bad for interrupting you. It's just every time that I've had you on and I've been filling in, uh, your your indicators were calling it, even, even when we were having a really kind of consolidation period, I think your target and I... I I'm going to try to find the, the chart you sent, but you had um, a potential target in the SPX around, you know, 5,000, right? 
Yeah, and 5,700, actually. That was a, a monthly chart on the S&Ps, and that right. was a head and shoulders bottom, I think, formed, uh, going on, taking the top of 2022, and uh, the high we had back in July of 2023, I thought that could be a head and shoulders bottom, and we broke above that neckline with yes. the sign of strength. And uh, yeah. you take the bottom of the head, and you take the measurements to the neckline. You add that on to the neckline. You come up around 5,700 on the S and P's, which uh, there's there's a lot of targets up in that mid 5,700 area. So I think we could hit it this year. So um, definitely, we're, and we're you know, I mean, on music here. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, you have the spine also breaking that you know 480 level again with conviction, and just continuing to go up. Tim, stay right there. We'll be uh, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. The ES Mini up about 0.22% right now. Russell up about 0.41. NQs off 0.14. And the Dow Futures, again, about the same, up about 0.24%. We are still with Tim Ord of the ordoracle.com. Tim, are you still with us? Yep, I sure am. So, uh, yeah, we were uh, on chart I, three at the break. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the monthly S&Ps and uh, that monthly chart. Yes. Um, and it could fail, but uh, it looks pretty good. There's other actually charts supporting that idea that this year is going to be a pretty good up year. And also, this is a 
election year. They're not going to let mm-hmm. the market really crumble here, you know. But yeah. I think it'll be at least double digits, um, you know, at least ten percent, maybe. I'm thinking another, you know, close to twenty percent again. But anyhow, uh, go back to chart three here. I'm going to also suggest or point out that the bottom window is a VIX, and a lot of times when that VIX is is below seventeen, which is uh, well, actually, all that blue area, I, I kind of shaded blue there. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times when that VIX is below 17, the market is in a uh, trending mode. So there's a lot of different type of indicators suggesting that not every day is going to be an up day or not every week is going to be an up week. But there's not going to be any major down weeks probably going forward here. Uh, I, I think over the next several months, I think this market, you know, the money – uh, most of the money, I think, will be made the first half of this year, I'll put it that way. It may get choppy as we get close to election around November, uh, but between now and June, I, I think this this, this market is just going to keep, in general, climbing up. So that VIX, because of its below 17, I think that's another indicator suggesting that uh, we could see a trending market. And actually, go to chart four here. Okay. Here's here's another indicator that may also suggest that we're in a trending market. Right. Uh, the, the top window is the RSI, and the middle window is the daily SPY. And it's pretty rare for the RSI to get 80, uh, around the 80 range. And I marked it with the blue dotted lines on the chart. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got 80 back on uh, uh, RSI, 80 on the um, – SPY on uh, December 18th of, of last year, about a month ago. And uh, normally when you when you get that, that's never the final high. And most times the market um, has a multi-month trending market. So I'm, I'm thinking we're still early in the, in the market uh, trading-wise. And I'm thinking um, if, if you look at all the times those blue markets or the, the blue or the – the uh, dotted blue line happened, the market at least rallied multi-months. So I'm thinking yeah. there's, uh, there's another reason why I'm thinking this month will be up, next month will be up, you know, probably March is up, April up, and maybe even May and June. But uh, I think this market is probably in a trending mode right now by uh, several different types of indicators. You know, the 21-day arms suggests that, the uh, VIX suggests that, and the RSI on the daily uh, SPY suggests that we're probably in a, in a trending market. So uh, it, it, look, it looks to me everything's kind of lining up here to be bullish. Definitely. So that may change. If it does, we'll change with it. But right now, uh, I don't see any major problem right in front of me uh, other than you know, some oscillation phases that may be pretty mild. But in general, this thing's going to go higher. So, um Anyhow, that's my 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 opinion over the next several months is that the market's going to go higher. So sure, uh, so, you know, and every uh, so, every indicator you've been showing us has has pointed that as well. You know, yep. So yep. so there's quite a few different views of it. You know, so I, I guess if you do get a, you know, I think the worst pullback we're going to have over the next three four months, whatever, is maybe five six. Five percent at most. I don't think that's going to happen. You might see a three percent at best, but I don't see ten percent pullbacks over the next several months. I'll put it that way. So uh, we can go to take a look at the gold market real quick. Sure. So um, uh, well, so for chart five, five, yes, okay, the pre inflation index. Yeah, the inflation deflation. I do an RSI on this thing, and it works pretty well. It picks out short term lows, and uh, I've been. Kind of leaning on the, the bullish side on the bigger time frames. I still think uh, uh, August of uh, 2022, or it looks like about well, October of 2022 was an important low. I don't think that low is going to be broken for a while. And since over the last actually six months, since August of last year, this market has virtually moved sideways. It really yep. hadn't gone up, really hadn't gone down. It's pretty much at the price it was back in July of August of last year. It's just gone sideways here. And we're getting another short-term buy signal because when the RSI of this ratio falls below 30, then turns up, 
which I think is turning up right now. Uh, we're probably seeing a low in this vicinity as we're speaking. And what's important, what the next rally does, normally when you get into CHOP, the market soon after will start a, a, a impulse wave. You go impulse wave to CHOP to impulse wave to CHOP, and that's how the market works. And we've been in CHOP for the last six months. We're due for an impulse wave. But will this next rally be an impulse wave? Don't know for sure. But if it, if it does manage to be an impulse wave where it rallies at least you know a couple of months, uh, then I think that changes a lot in the market. Um, but anyhow, on a short-term basis, there's a bullish signal right here. How big the bounce is, I'm not for sure. But let's turn to chart six. Okay, we have the weekly GDX. Yeah, the weekly GDX. And this is a chart. Uh, actually, this is the weekly. And we're going to look at the monthly. This is a chart that picks out the trends. Uh, and if you can see, we're in... Uh, the chop part right now. The major signals come, uh, well, anyhow, I'll tell you what the, they are. The bottom window is a weekly up down volume percent. So it, it, it measures the up down volume. And the next window higher is the advanced decline percent. So, and I put a Bollinger band on it. Major sell, sell signals are, occur, and that's the red lines across there, which has been three of them, occur when the, that indicator, both indicators fall below the mid Bollinger band. So it gave a sell signal back in 2012, gave a buy signal in 2016, gave a sell signal in 2017, gave a actually kind of a double buy signal in 2019, had a decent rally, gave a sell signal in 2021, and actually gave a two false signals. They actually both of them got above the mid Bollinger Band that fell back down again, uh, So which is pretty unusual. But it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And right now we're still below mid-Bollinger Band on the weekly time frame. So, on, so if we can rally uh, on page, you know, the previous uh, page, if we can rally for a couple of months, most likely this weekly, both weeklies will turn above the mid-Bollinger Band and give a multi, you know, normally these, these type of rallies last at least a year, if not a couple of years. And uh, that would turn... We need a rally on GDX to last a couple of months to turn these indicators back above the mid Bollinger Band. When that's going to happen, I don't know. It depends on, you know, the next rally. If it lasts a couple of months, uh, it'll be a pretty big bully signal. Absolutely, Tim. I, I you, we have two more left. Uh, if, you, if you're okay with staying to the next one, we just uh, knock them out. That that would be awesome because I, I want to hear more about right. gold in particular. So. All right. Okay. Awesome, folks. Stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. 
At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Take a look at the GDX right now, trading at 28.23, up about 1.91%. We are on with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. He was talking basically about the outlook uh, for gold. Tim, you're still with us? Yep, I still am. So yeah. uh, let's, take a, let's, let's go back to chart five. Okay. Um, the, the only reason why we bring this up again, anyhow, it's giving a bicycle right now. What's well, important, yep. how long that bicycle is going to last. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a smaller here. I needed my to get one during the break, dry. too. It's allergies or something, Tim. No, <laughs> no, just, my throat's a little dry. Yeah. But anyhow, <laughs> uh, chart five. So Weber, you know, the, the, if this rally out of chart five can last a couple of months, you know, three, four months or something like that, or at least two months, uh, if you go with chart six now, mm -hmm. if that, this is a degree of time on the chart number five, if it can last several months, most likely if that does happen, it will pull the uh, uh, bottom window indicator and the next window up indicator probably above the Bollinger Bands. And if we can do that, then you're looking that rally to continue higher right. probably for, you know, a multi-year type rally because this, this weekly chart is a multi-year chart. If we can get above the mid-Bollinger Band and stay there, which normally when that happens, it usually stays above it, it goes on. And uh, so I'm thinking at some point, Fairly near term, we're not talking years out because this thing, uh, the, the weekly, has, has stayed below the mid Bollinger Band since 2021. Well, that's three years ago, and most of these signals, at most, like they had one last, you know, for 2012 high down 2016. That was a four year signal, but most of these signals last about a year and a half give or take, year and a half two. Well, it's already been three years since the last signal, so we're due or something other than down here. And so I'm thinking at some point we're going to get above that mid-Bollinger Band in both those indicators, and most likely it's going to stay above those mid-Bollinger Bands for at least a year, maybe two or three years. So yeah. it depends on this next rally. You know, if it can last a couple, three months, most likely the weeklies will turn bullish. Now, if that can happen, let's flip to chart seven. Okay. So... Now, if, if the weekly you can get above the mid Bollinger Band, stay above mid Bollinger Band, it'll flip. This is a monthly chart of the same indicators, but on a monthly time frame. Mm -hmm. And so far, the monthly is also below the mid Bollinger Bands on both of them. But if you look where they are, if you look at the bottom window, which is the uh, monthly cumulative advanced decline, you're matching the 2016 low. So it's see. it's yeah, it's really a beat up. Yeah. If you, if, you go, if you go on to the next one higher, which is the up down volume, it's pretty close to matching the 2016 low. So the markets in general are really sold out. You really want, you know, extreme uh, situations to the downside because, uh, you know, we had three years of selling here. You know, when will, when yes. will the selling stop? You know, most likely it will stop at the previous lows, and we're in that vicinity now. 
So, well, and, and you that's see too, like on a bigger time frame, but right now they still haven't turned up. So. Yeah, and, and you see not like a, a you know, we've we've been getting a general downward kind of movement, right? But even on the year, you just see kind of this. At least I'm looking at the GDX right now. Yeah, this this kind of moving up towards around 32 level. Of course, we had a low in about October of last year, 2562, then up a little bit and low. It's just it's it's kind of sleepy. I'm just talking about the GDX right now. Um, but I I hear what you're saying on that kind of like oversold situation, right? Like it, it's not seeming like it's going to go much lower right now. Uh, but it's just a question yeah, of like when does this wake up? And when it wakes up, I don't have any doubt that this is you know it's going to be great. Yeah, probably a good opportunity. So let's look at the top, you know, on the chart number seven, look at the top window there, which is the monthly GDX. And I drew a trend line across that where the tops were going back to that 2021 high. So we really had a bunch of chop for a long period of right. time. But uh, to, to really break a trend line, if you, know, if you ever look at study Weisskopf, you need to break a trend line with this, well, going up, through a trend line, you need to break with a sign of strength. That's a SOS there. And if you notice, we're not backing away from that trend line, that blue trend line right there. So we're kind of hug, hugging hugging that area. And so I'm, I'm saying if we can uh, you know, go back to chart five, which is basically that short-term bullish signal we got on uh, the inflation-deflation ratio, if that can stay on a buy signal for a couple of months, most likely we'll, we'll get through that trend line, probably with a sign of strength. And that will change everything on this chart. So we're, we're close, but has that thing, other than a short-term buy signal, the intermediate term trend, I have to say right now, is still down. Mm -hmm. But the it's, it's to a point where you're matching the lows of 2016 are coming close. And, and so the market's, you know, pretty much sold out, you know, wouldn't. When will it get above the mid Bollinger Bands? It'll be after the low because this is kind of a delayed indicator. It doesn't try to pick the exact tops or the exact bottoms, but does give you the meat of the majority of, of, of the, the advanced declines. In other words, if you look, look at the last sell signal we had in 2021, if you look at where it took, you know, if you look at, at where it happened on the uh, GDX, which is the top window, it was actually several or a couple of months after the top. So I'm thinking that the bottom's in of, of, of September, October of 2022. We're in a sideways consolidation right now. And uh, at, at some point, we're probably going to have a sign of strength through, looks like about a, a 30 range or about 32 maybe on GDX. If we can get through that, then uh, I think there's a new ball game uh, coming for a lot of these gold stocks. Most of these gold yeah. stocks have, have really just be, been beat up since 2021. Um, so it's it's kind of a dull market, but yep. you know after dull there's uh, euphoria. So I'm that's thinking right. that's way in front of us yet, but um, it, it looks looks promising. I'll put it that way. It's not like we're at some major high here, mm -hmm. looking for a big down. We're probably uh, approaching uh, some sort of a major low, but we haven't turned up yet. And so how long is that waiting game going to occur? I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be years out you know it could be several weeks maybe several months but my bet would probably happen this year sometime sure. so i don't know um don't really have a time frame but it's due you know it's yes we we've been on a sell signal since 2021 you know can it go another three years you know it could but it's uh, undoubtful because uh, previous signals last about a year and a half or two so we'll have to wait and see how that all forms up, but we'll be there as as we progress forward. I'll uh, you know I'll be a little glad to, to come on your show and say, yeah, the weekly cumulative advance decline and the monthly cumulative advance decline both close above Mitch Bollinger Band, and I can say with confidence that we're probably in a multi-year rally. So, and I hope that yeah. happens sometime this year. So we'll <laughs> see. I do too, Tim. Thank you so much for joining us today. That was insightful as always. Okay, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thank you. So. It, folks, that was Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. You check over here right now. This is his website. Go give him a visit. You the home, the newsletter, get a contact. Let's go check it out. Tim, thank you so much. Folks, thank you so much. We'll be right back.
Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv welcome back folks this is jacob shoot filling in for tom o'brien uh, I'm fighting for my life against this pollen right now. We were just uh, on the phone with uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. He is on the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you liked that segment you just had, we have all of the archives up on YouTube. Give them a check out. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are going to be with Tom, of course. Uh, so give that, give that a look. And we really thank Tim for coming on every time. All right, let's take a look at what we got going on. Nokia turned some heads today. Oh, about 11.58%. Look at that. Still trading at 381 altogether. What's going on? They said on Thursday that it will begin a 600 million, uh, 600, so 600 million euro, $653 million share buyback this quarter after it reported that its profits plunged in 2023. Ooh. Nokia posted fourth quarter net sales of 5.7 billion euros and 23% year on year excuse me, a 23% year-on-year decline. Comparable operating profit fell 27% year-on-year to 846 million. Ooh. Nokia has been hurt by telecommunication operators cutting back on spending on their networks and by a slowdown in the pace of investments in India. Of course, they're very big uh, installing 5G and maintaining that. Uh, Nokia shares are up about, it's up essentially because of the stock buyback. They had that little, they were, what, let me see if I can get the year on this. They were like a meme stock a long time. Yeah, around here. But uh, that just kind of it kind of died out on it. Um, 
they were saying that essentially they're still investable because you know they're establishing these uh, kind of 5G networks and maintaining them. I don't know. We'll have to wait to see. This is probably a decent price for uh, the stock, all things considered. I think Nokia is probably here to stay for quite a while. Uh, but, you know, obviously last year was not really stellar for them uh, in any kind of way. Okay, we talk about that. Oh, no, the show's over. Read up on Tesla, everyone. There's a lot of weird stuff going on. Of course, demand's going to go down going forward, he's saying. Tesla, of course, is not going to grow at the rate it had been growing, um, which really, in my opinion, is why the stock was so high. And uh, Elon Musk, that EV makers will demolish competitors without trade barriers. EV makers from China. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. We have Tom O'Brien back tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.